and I get started and show you what you're here for, right? That semi-structured data. So what we have is connections and this is built with an enablement pack. So if I go in and look at my S3 connection, I'm gonna to connect to S3. We have a browser that can browse the data and we have a load script and all of this is built into our tool so that you have, you can do the enablement pack and get this functionality to access Snowflake, Google Cloud, uh, Azure. So if we drilled into the file browser, I can see my S3 bucket. I have different file types. So I can go into my JSON files and I can pull order details and say, I want to take that file and load that into my data warehouse. Now, you can see that it has split out my JSON and it recognizes what's there. You can change the depth if maybe you only want to go to a certain level and you can have selected multiple files on the previous step and I can then say I want to do this for all the files. So now I'm going to drill down into my object and see what's in my JSON and I can just take this and say I'm going to take the order header and I'm going to use that entire thing. So now I go ahead and it's processing that JSON data and it will show up in my browser over here on the right hand side. So I can see that there are the, the fields that are in my JSON. So now I can take this and I can create a load table from this. I can load it up into my data warehouse. It does things like we do automation of naming standards and target locations and data type mappings and all of that for you as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and load this data. So because we are flexible, this gives you the option because well, truthfully, no two data warehouses are the same. So we have flags and switches built in everything so that you can make it work like you want it to, to not stick you in a black box that you cannot um, make changes, that you are inflexible. We have that flexibility to do what you need to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and create and load this JSON table up into my Snowflake. So. Now, while this is working, I was just gonna show you, this is our object browser. You're browsing the metadata. Over here is the physical browser so that we can browse those files. We can browse Snowflake. And then this is the action pane, you've noticed that. But the most important thing is you can see everything that we do. We're very transparent. So you can see right here, you can see the statement. There's the create table up in Snowflake. So I'm going against Snowflake today. There's the insert into as select from, and then you can see right here where we've inserted those rows from my S3 bucket, from my JSON file and loaded it up into my data warehouse. So we can do the same thing with, so if I go and access this again, I can browse the connection and this time let's choose Parquet, right? That's the title of this said Parquet and JSON. So, so let's look at Parquet files. I can take this one and add it and we're gonna do the same steps that we did. You can change the profiling factor. In fact, you can do JSON, you can do delimited, Avro, um, XML, Excel, we have all of those capabilities built into this. So now if I come over here to my browse panel again, I can see there's my parquet file. So I can do the same thing again. Let's turn it into a load table. So now it's going to come up and I am going to, at this point, I'm just going to click OK. I'm not actually going to create it because I'm going to show you how you can change things. So we've taken this structure and pulled it across. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an, I don't know, I'm going to take a couple of these and let me show you how we can change the column types. So I can come in here to the data types and say these selected ones 
I want to change them all to varchar64 so that you can do that and change the data types before you ever create the table. So we've taken that structure and pulled it across. So this is really important because not everything is in the JSON, in the parquet, in your XML will show up like you want it to and you have that flexibility. So then we create this table. And so you can actually see right here that we list the source table, userdata.parquet. So you can see that, you can see what columns it came from and stuff. And then you can see that we've, we've loaded the data, we've created the data, the table. And now I can go ahead and load that table with my parquet data. So this is how you're able to quickly take what's in Parquet, what's in XML, what's in JSON, and get it up into your data warehouse in a usable format. So now if I were to browse my Snowflake and go ahead and look at it, and we can see the tables that are there. So if I set my filter, filters are always good, <laughs> I found, with data warehouses, because the number of tables are just mind-boggling in some of the data warehouses I've worked in. But if we can set the table, the, the filter to just the load tables, we can see, uh, I can see that order detail and the user data that I created. So I can take this, if we go back to this diagram, I could take this, run it through a stage table if I wanted to, put some conversions in it, some transformations, but what I'm going to do, since this is a, a very short little demonstration of our product strictly for the semi-structured, I'm going to take that parquet file and I'm going to turn it into a type 2 dimension just to kind of give you an idea of what you can do with this data. So if I take that user data and go ahead and make it a dimension. And so I'm just gonna, that looks good. I'm going to, I'm gonna go ahead and make it a type two dimension. That's one of the more difficult ones, correct? So I know when I was first doing data warehousing, we spent weeks, if not months, trying to determine exactly what we were um, going to, you know, how we were gonna track changes in the data warehouse. And that is, is one of those things that really does it, it's nice that now we have standards and not only do we have standards, but we can um, go ahead and automate that process for you. So the only thing we really have to do is build the update script. So let's build the update script for this type two dimension. We're going to create and load the dimension for us. So now if I just were to press OK, it would say, oh, you need a business key. So we kind of head off those mistakes like I used to make when I was doing data warehousing in the past. So, um, oh, I need to set my business key. So this I'll just set for the ID. And then if I do it again, it says, oh, you're a type two dimension. You have to tell me what fields do you want to track changes on? So we build this in so that you can um, really make it as easy as possible with as little mistakes as possible. So, so now I am building it. I have created the table and built the update procedure and loading my dimension. And so if we display the data, we can see where we have added the unknown record for you, the zero record key, and here's our type two dimension fields, the start and end date, current flag, and version. All of that was added very, very easily. <laughs> In fact, let me show you the data. So we, we do um, auto version all of the code for you. So if we come look at it, we can see um, the code, the load code that's actually in here. And we built 411 lines of code 
in a couple of clicks. And this is not easy code. This is that type two dimension fields. So now if we were to look at this and say, what happens to a data warehouse? Well, they never stay the same, do they? There's always changes, whether that's uh, a week later, a month later, a year later, data warehouses change. So let's say we got a new requirement that said we needed to track an additional field or stop tracking a field. We can, we can just rebuild that update procedure and I can go into change detection. And maybe they said, oh, we don't really care if their IP address changes. We don't want that anymore. So now I can do that. I can recreate this table. I can regenerate the update script, execute it and display the data all in one step. So this is where the power of an automation tool really goes, really presents itself that we have, we have just taken this change and, and propagated it across. And if we look at the data, we can come in here and I can go back and edit the, the table one more, edit the update procedure one more time. We have tools built in to view the previous versions, because we auto versioned everything, I can actually come in and look at it. And then we even have tools to compare it. So we can compare to the viewer. And then I can see where the documentation at the top changed. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention that. It's a lot better code than I ever wrote. <laughs> so we have that you can go down and see where this was where we deleted the IP address from the fields, the type two dimension fields, and where it was inserted into the untracked columns. So, so that's how easy it is to, to make changes. We can even do things like do impact analysis, like a trackback diagram and see how the data got into this dimension from a parquet file on S3 connection into a load table. So we're tracking all of that. In fact, let me show you real quickly how we can create the documentation because that's one of those important things, right? So we create documentation, technical documentation now. Now this is one of the most important things, this, this whole demonstration I'm showing you, pay attention right here. Do you wanna include shadows on your diagram boxes. <laughs> yes, there's actually a checkbox for that. I don't know where that came from or how, but somehow that got in there. I just think that's one of the one of the most you know uh, hilarious things about the tool that there's a checkbox in there for those those blasted shadow boxes. So now we can display it because we create HTML. We can display it in a browser, or I can display it right here in the application. So we create two kinds of documentation. We create user documentation. That is that from a user perspective and we create that technical documentation that details the meat behind it. What stage tables and load tables were used, what transformations were done. So, so this is technical this is the user documentation and we can come down. The only thing I created for this was this dimension, right? So we can look at the dimension. I neglected to point out while we were creating it, you can add some business context. We know technically what this is about, but we don't know the business purpose of this dim user data. So you could have gone in when we were creating it and added a purpose and a concept and a grain and that sort of thing so that it shows up. So we also include a glossary that has every column in the data warehouse. And then if we look at the technical documentation though, we can actually come down and see more than that. We can see that update script that we just wrote a few minutes ago shows up in here. We can look at the source table. We can see that it came from this load table into this. Here's our, our transformations. Here's that trackback diagram. And oh yes, um, the extended properties. So if you need to do incremental loads, you can do that with our tool. So all of that kind of stuff is in there. And if we look, we can look at 
Um, we did not create a stage table, but we can look at the load tables and see that user data and see exactly where it came from, the fields, the variable names, if we wanted to have extended properties to do additional things. So it you can see it came from that user data dot parquet. So now this is our tool and I hope that you understand and and got a good feeling for Wearscape and how we can really take those semi-structured files and get them into your data warehouse.